God, the Creator Part 2 Muslim Glorification vs Christian and Infidel Falsehoods and Atheists Denial On the Speculative Philosophy of Atheists and Deniers of the Existence of God Atheists and deniers of the existence of God begin with premises that are speculative, hypothetical, baseless, and unsupported. The following are a sample. 1. They say that matter is eternal, asily, it cannot be created or destroyed. That is incorrect. Modern science has demonstrated that matter in any of its identifiable forms is not perpetual, it can be broken down or transformed into other forms of matter or energy. It is common knowledge that anything which can be broken down or transformed is not eternal or uncreated, indeed, it is by definition created, hadith. Therefore, actual matter is created and impermanent. We present the following example. If we were to tell someone conversant in chemistry and physics that matter can cease to exist and then proved it, offering the example of death, his response might be to object, saying, no. I will not be ceased to exist. My body will simply change form. Then, we could say to him, but these other forms of matter will also cease to exist. He would say, but they in turn will be transformed into other forms of matter. We could continue, saying, and these in turn will cease to exist. And what they have transformed into will cease to exist. He would insist on his opinion that behind all of this there would be matter which could not be destroyed. Then we could say to him, and what is this form of matter that cannot be destroyed? We would find him unable to venture a response. That is because, in reality, he is not referring to actual matter, he is referring to a substance that is in the mind, philosophical, hypothetical and conjectural. There we have it. This, eternal substance, has no existence in the material world, it exists only in the mind. But in our everyday and scientific lives, we deal with material substances, not mental substances, Ibid. In short, beyond all this matter and its existence, there must necessarily be a real cause for everything we find in nature, and it must be, eternal without beginning or end. Indeed, it is Allah, the Supreme Creator. 2. An example of these mental, philosophical conjectures. Imagine that a small group of aliens from some stars came down to Earth. They could hear, but they were incapable of speech, and they wanted to search for a way to communicate with human beings. While they were searching, a wind blew and the limbs of one of them rubbed up against the other, producing a sound. They repeated the process more than once until the wind stopped, so they thought they had found the secret to human speech, which is that the human mouth consists of two jaws full of teeth. In the friction of the upper jaw against the lower jaw, speech occurs, for without a doubt, when one thing rubs against another, a sound is produced. However, could such an incident be said to be the discovery of the secret of human speech? Of course, not, the challenge of Islam by Wahidat and Khan. That would be conjecture an invalid and baseless conclusion. Likewise, the speculative philosophy of atheists and deniers of the existence of God can be considered to discover the organization of nature, but not the explanation for the universe. This is nothing but a trick and a false claim, as we pointed out in the previous example. As such, we repeat, the philosophy of atheists is merely speculative and hypothetical. Its claims are invalid, and it has no basis in truth. The likes of these atheists and deniers of the existence of God have shut their eyes to obvious facts and built imaginary archways of assumption, as demonstrated in their uncommon reasoning. Ibid. They are none but slaves to passion and desire. They submit to vanity and pride. Another example of this fanciful, intellectual philosophy of atheists and deniers of the existence of God is the following. Such a person who denies the existence of Allah Almighty might say, Could your Lord create a stone that cannot be moved? Such a question assumes that we would be forced to answer yes or no, and in either cases, he would get the answer he wants. If we were to say, yes, he could. He would say, then there is something he cannot do, move that stone. But if we were to say, no, he would reply, then there is something he cannot do, so he is not all-powerful. But we will not give either answer. Instead, we say, your question conceals a fundamental incongruity, for it is a logical contradiction. The power of Allah Almighty is not contingent on impossibilities. For that which is logically impossible is not in reality anything, the method of argument and debate in settling matters of belief by Dr. Uthman Ali Hassan. 3. Atheists and deniers of the existence of God propose that experimentation and observation are the only two ways of discovering facts. This is a false claim. We will give an example that will prove that experimentation and observation are not the only two ways of discovering facts. Science is not limited to that which can be directly experienced. There is knowledge that can only be acquired through narration, knowledge that can only be acquired through logical deduction, and still more knowledge that can only be acquired through prophets. 
messengers and divine scripture. Among that which proves that knowledge is not limited to what can be directly experienced is. People in ancient times used to build sailboats made of wood, believing that water would only carry that which is lighter than it. When some of them said that an iron boat could float on the surface of the water, just like wood, people rejected the idea and ridiculed him. They would come to him with a metal shoe in a bucket of water to show people that this piece of iron settles to the bottom instead of floating on the top of the water. This was an experiment. Yet, we all know today and we admit that this experiment was wrong. Had they used a metal dish instead, they would have seen with their own eyes the truth of what he said about iron boats. The Challenge of Islam, Al-Islam Yata'ada, by Wahiduddin Khan Such is the case with atheists and deniers of the existence of God. Their knowledge is limited to what they have seen with their own eyes or in direct experimentation, and they use this to prove the truth of what they say. That is why atheists deny the existence of God the Creator, arguing that they cannot see Him. They have limited their knowledge to that which they can see with their own eyes or directly experience, which is, without a doubt, a speculative philosophy and a false, invalid claim. Another proof of this is. At the start of the 20th century, the telescope was still weak, so when astronomers would look at the sky with this instrument, they would observe many cosmological objects like light. They deduced that they were clouds of vapor and gas which were in the phase right before turning into stars. But after more powerful telescopes were built and these cosmological objects were viewed again. They learned that these multiple bodies of light were a grouping of many stars that only looked like a cloud because of the incredible distance between them and the Earth. Ibid. This is one of the many examples which confirm that experimentation and observation are not the only two methods of discovering hard fact. Knowledge is not limited to things which can be seen with the eye or directly experienced. Everything we believe in was at one time a mere supposition, until new facts were discovered to support the truth of the claim. Scientists do believe in the existence of things they cannot see as a result of the appearance of their products and effects. This is the principle which determines our belief that, behind this universe, there is a supreme creator. Since we can see his signs and effects which point to the greatness of his attributes and abilities in creating this astonishingly sublime universal order. 4. They say that matter came together by accident, taking the forms from which our whole world is designed, including life and consciousness. This is a false claim. Chance alone especially in this case is useless, there must necessarily be design behind it. To give an example, if all beings were formed from a combination of atoms, it would have to have been by chance, but that contradicts the fact that the atoms themselves were designed. Such that if they come together in one way, they form gold and if they come together in another way, they form water, and so on. Chance alone does not solve this conundrum, for it is not free of design. Physics and the Existence of the Creator, al Fijia W.A. Wujud Alkalik, by Dr. Jafar Shikidris. Among that which confirms the existence of this designer and maker is these atoms and their pattern of coming together, and by extension, this entire universe. All we can say is that, behind this well-designed, exquisite universe is God, the Supreme Creator. To answer the divisive issue, does the universe have a creator? The existence of God the Creator is self-evident to all rational minds. That is why no one ever denied the existence of a supreme creator except small groups of people. Divine scriptures were based on the people's acceptance of the existence of their Lord Most High that He was the one who created them, provided for them, gave them life and made them to die then. He increased them in knowledge of Him and called them to worship Him alone, without partner, for they knew that no one else made them or provided for them. No one else gave them life or took them in death. They knew that no one else could be described by any of the attributes of God the Creator, physics and the existence of the Creator, al Fariata W.A. Wood al Kaka, by D.R. J.A. Far Shikidris. The question might be rephrased in the following manner. We say, is it the Creator who is eternal the Alpha, before whom nothing existed and the Omega after whom nothing exists or is it matter? A law was discovered called, the Law of Available Energy, or, the Law of Entropy, which confirms that matter is not eternal and therefore the existence of this universe could not possibly be eternal. The Law of Available Energy, or the Law of Entropy The Law of Available Energy states that, heat always flows from regions of higher temperature to regions of lower temperature, never the opposite. It is not possible for heat to flow from regions of lower temperature to regions of higher temperature, heat always flows from regions of higher temperature to regions of lower temperature. Based on this important scientific discovery, there must come a time when the heat of all elements balances out. At that time, no useful energy is available for life and work. As a result, chemical and natural processes stop and life comes to an end spontaneously. With that, we have firmly established that the universe is not eternal. 
In this manner, scientific research has inadvertently confirmed that the universe has a beginning, and therefore, it has also automatically confirmed the existence of God. The creator of this universe, for everything that has a beginning cannot come into being on its own, it must have a prime mover God the creator. We should also point out that there is no contradiction between a thing being created by Allah, glorious and exalted, and its creation having a natural explanation. It was said to the Prophet Muhammad, Peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, O Messenger of Allah, what is your opinion of medicines we take to treat illnesses? Healing prayers we say to seek relief, and protection prayers we say to ward off evil. Do they prevent what Allah has preordained for us at all? He, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, replied, They are the preordainment of Allah. Reported by Al Tirmidhi. From our observations of the creations of Allah, blessed and exalted, we find that it is from his way, glorious and sublime, that he creates things for a reason. And that the reasons for some things do not change at all. Allah, glorious and sublime, is the one who creates the reasons and gives them a cause, and they have no effect except through his power, glorious and exalted. To conclude this chapter, we will present the summary of a debate that took place between Muslims and communists who deny the existence of God the Creator. Which took place following the Russian Revolution led by Lenin. There was a gathering of Muslims, Christians, and communists, materialists or otherwise. More than 10,000 people were there. The debate. The leader of the communists stood up and lectured and talked and raved, until he said. The people say, God exists and he is the one who created the world, who protects and guides it, but this saying of theirs is a fairy tale. If he existed, we would see him as we see the sun, the moon, and everything else. They say he is big and great and glorious, as it says in the Quran, the Torah, and the Bible, yet we now see the smallest of things with observational instruments microscopes and telescopes. We have examined and scrutinized everything, but we cannot see him. No one has seen him. No one has even reported to have seen him. So he is absent and he does not exist. All things are produced by nature according to materialistic principles. Abu Abd al-Karim, the Muslim speaker, then said. So I stood and went up to the podium. I praised Allah Almighty and asked that peace and blessing be sent upon his messenger, our master, Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, and said. The leader who denies the existence of his Lord and Creator, glorious in his power, based his denial on the fact that he cannot see him, so I ask him. Is there a soul in his body and consciousness in his mind? Of course, he had to say, yes, he does have a soul in his body and consciousness in his mind. And if that were so, can he see his soul and consciousness? What is it and how is it? Like that, he admitted the existence of something he could not see and confessed to the reality of that which he could not witness. In fact, he admitted to the existence of a soul and consciousness because of the obviousness of their effect. If that were the case then, he should admit the existence of Allah, for all creation is the effect of his power and the sign of his knowledge and wisdom. If this ignorant, defiant person could not even see the soul within his own body, how could he see the Lord of the worlds, when the soul is one of his decrees? The noble creator is he with whom there is no comparison, he who has no equal. May he, glorious and exalted, be magnified above that which the unjust say about him. So the disbeliever was utterly defeated. And Allah guides the wrongdoing people. Al Bakara 2 258. O Prophet, do you know about the arrogance of the rebellious one who argued with Abraham about Allah's lordship and oneness? This happened because Allah had given him the power to rule, yet he transgressed and took advantage of his position. Abraham explained to him the attributes of his Lord by saying, My Lord is the one who gives life to the creation and causes them to die. The rebel stubbornly said, I too can give life and cause death. I can kill whomever I wish and pardon whomever I wish. Abraham then put forward another stronger argument by saying to him, The Lord I worship is the one who brings the sun from the direction of the east. So, you should bring it from the direction of west. The rebel was shocked and defeated by this strong argument. Allah does not allow wrongdoers to be guided and traverse his path because of their disobedience and rebellion. Al-Baqarah, 258 Abu Abd al-Karim then said, So the Muslims said, Allahu Akbar, God is great. Subhan Allah, glory be to Allah, and they clapped and cheered and were merry. While the misguided deniers were embarrassed and humiliated. As a result of this debate, the Russians attacked the home of Abu Abd al-Karim and took everything in it of value. Then they sentenced him to death by firing squad. But Allah Almighty, his creator and maker. 
rescued him from their evil and outed them in an amazing story to be told in its time and place, the method of argument and debate in settling matters of belief, Manba al yadal Wamunad Arafai. Takrur al Itikad by Dr. Uthman Ali Hassan Does a person's sound, wise nature instinctively acknowledge that the universe must have a God and Creator? Allah, glorious and exalted, created man to instinctively believe in him, so the intuitive sense of the existence of God the Creator is self-evident. Man, by his nature, believes in his Lord, in accordance with the statement of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, every baby is born on the fitrah, pure nature. Then his parents turn him into a Jew or a Christian or a Zoroastrian. Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim That explains why, when anything happens to a person all of a sudden, and that thing is a threat to him, his tongue automatically utters a phrase like O oh God, or O oh Lord, or something of the sort. This proves that, in his unspoiled and instinctive state, man was created to believe in the existence of Allah, mighty and majestic. The Jurisprudence of Worship, Fika Baydat, by Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Salah al Thaymin. 4. Allah, glorious and exalted, is the God and creator of man, animals, birds, inanimate objects, and all things. And He, glorious and sublime, is the creator of this universe and all the accidents and causes therein. We should therefore know that there is no contradiction between everything being created and there being a cause for its occurrence, for it is from Allah's way to create causes. That is because He, glorious and exalted, is the one who created the cause and made it a cause. Other points of proof that this pure, sound, wise instinct necessarily acknowledges the existence of a creator for this universe include. The following are living examples of people who came to know their creator through this pure, instinctive nature by which we were created to believe in the existence of Allah, glorious and exalted. 1. A Bedouin man was asked, What proof do you have of the existence of the Lord? Almighty. He said, Glory be to Allah. Indeed, the droppings indicate the camel and the footprints indicate the traveler. The sky is full of stars, the earth is full of mountain highways, and the seas are full of waves. Does this not indicate the existence of the subtle and well acquainted? Indeed, the words of this simple, pure natured Bedouin man adhere more faithfully to experimental methodology which is based on astute observation. Indeed, it is closer in influence on the soul and more powerful in convincing the mind than any form of analogy. People are of two types. A. The type with a sound nature, he knows Allah Almighty and believes in him because of the intuitive sense with which he was created. Were he to see the signs of Allah Most High in the heavens and the earth, he would know that they are proof of him and indication of his existence. His knowledge and belief in God the Creator precede his knowledge of Allah's signs, for his knowledge of Allah's signs confirms his belief. It does not initiate it, Physics and the Existence of the Creator, al Fishia W. A. Wajid al Khalik, by Dr. J. A. Far Sheikh Idris. On this topic, Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said People's sound natures know the Creator even without these signs, for they were designed in that way, for if they were not to know Him without these signs, they would not know that these were signs of Him. Because they are of Him and for Him, they must necessarily bring to mind that which they are meant to signify, the meaning of the signifier must be an essential quality in it. It is imperative in this respect to know that the signified is a requirement, for if the significance were not apparent, it would not mean anything. b. The type whose nature has been corrupted. He no longer believes in the existence of a creator, but if he contemplates the signs of Allah Most High, he would find them pointing to him, so he would believe in Allah by way of these signs. It would be as though these signs, in reality, remind people of a truth deep in their psyches, Ibid. On this point, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, to acknowledge the Creator and His perfection is a necessary part of the nature of a human being if His nature is unspoiled, even though there is much evidence for that. Many people have need of this evidence when their instinctive nature has been tampered with and exposed to unfortunate circumstances. Collection of Legal Rulings, Mahmu al fadawa by IBN Taymiyyah Allah Almighty says Or have they been created without a Creator to create them? Or are they their own creators? The existence of a creation without a creator or a creation which creates itself is impossible, so why do they not worship their own creator? Or did they create the heavens and the earth? But they do not have conviction that Allah is their creator, if they had been convinced of that, they would have declared his oneness and brought faith in his messenger. Al-Tur 52, 35-36 The Holy Quran calls those who deny the existence of their creator, glorious and exalted, to think about this great truth which he knows better than anything else in the heavens or on the earth. 
the Holy Quran says to those deniers of Allah's existence, paraphrased. If it were not Allah who created you, who created the universe around you, could you have been created without anything to create you? Did you come from absolute nothingness? Any reasonable man would say to himself, certainly not. That is impossible. Were you the one who made yourself? He would say, of course not, for that would make things appear ever more impossible. Were you the one who created these heavens and this earth? He would say, of course not. To say such a thing would be arrogant. This is the kind of proof ordinary people can get their minds around. That is why, in the Holy Quran, many chapters begin in the form of theoretical questions, Ibid number 16. This form of Quranic address, demonstrated in the two verses above, held great influence over some of the Arabs who heard it. Al-Bukhari narrated in his authentic collection, on the authority of Muhammad ibn Jabir ibn Mud im, through his father, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, read Surat al-Tur in the Makrib, Sunset, Prayer. When he reached the verse, or have they been created without a creator to create them? Or are they their own creators? The existence of a creation without a creator or a creation which creates itself is impossible, so why do they not worship their own creator? Or did they create the heavens and the earth? But they do not have conviction that Allah is their creator, if they had been convinced of that, they would have declared his oneness and brought faith in his messenger. Or do they have the treasures of your Lord's provision to give to whom they wish, and prophethood to give to or stop from whom they want? Or are they the controllers and disposers according to their wish? Al-Tur 52, 35-37 And my heart was about to fly. Reported by Al-Bukhari In his tafsir, Ibn Kathir says about verse 35 from Surat Al-Tur, Jabir had just approached the Prophet after the Battle of Badr to ransom the captives, and at that time he was still a polytheist. Hearing this part of this chapter was one of the things that caused him to enter Islam afterwards. 1. Imam Malik Al-Razi related on the authority of Imam Malik that Al-Rashid asked him about that, meaning about the existence of Allah. So he, meaning Imam Malik, demonstrated it to him through the variation in languages, sounds and songs, Tafsir Al-Quran Al-Karim, by Ibn Kathir. In other words, the variations in language among different individuals and peoples in all parts of the world. And likewise the sounds and harmonies are from the signs and proofs that bear witness to the existence of this Creator God and His great wisdom and power. 2. Imam Abu Hanifa on the authority of Abu Hanifa, some unbelievers asked him about the existence of an Almighty Maker, the Creator, so he told them, Leave me, for I am pondering a matter I was informed about. He told them about a ship on the sea, overloaded with all types of merchandise, but without anyone to protect it or steer it, yet despite that, it comes and goes by itself. Braving great waves to relieve itself of it, the merchandise, going wherever it pleases without anyone to guide it. They, the infidels, said, that is something no sane person would say. So he replied, Woe to you! All that is in existence in the higher world and the lower world and all the masterfully designed things therein, do they not have a maker? Thus, these people were rendered speechless and they returned to the truth, accepting Islam at his hand. Ibid. And so we see that the pure, unsullied, wise nature of man necessarily knows that the universe has a creator God a wise planner. No one denies what his pure nature and unpolluted reason would admit except an insolent, ignorant fool. 3. Imam al-Shafi'i On the authority of Imam al-Shafi'i, who was asked about the existence of a maker, creator, he said, Behold the berry leaf. It is of one flavor, yet the worm eats it and produces silk, the bee eats it and produces honey, the sheep eats it and produces dung and droppings, and the gazelle eats it and produces musk. Though it is only one thing. Ibid. Imam al-Shafi'i demonstrated the point with some of the signs of Allah, glorious and exalted, which testify to the greatness of his creation and the absoluteness of his power. And this indicated his own existence. 4. Imam al-Shafi'i knew that this sign indicated this creator God because of his own sound nature. As such, the sign was a confirmation of his belief, not the cause of it, as we have previously explained. 4. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal on the authority of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, who was asked about that, meaning the proof of Allah's existence, he said, Behold a well-protected fortress, smooth, without door or window, its exterior like white silver, its interior like pure gold. Then, as it was so, its walls were penetrated and there came forth a seeing, hearing animal, beautiful in shape and sound, lovely, meaning an egg when a chick emerges, Ibid. 
5. Abu Nuwas was asked about that, meaning the proof of Allah's existence, and he replied in verse. Contemplate the foliage of the earth and look at the effects of what the sovereign has made. Eyes of staring silver with irises of melted gold on a bar of chrysolite, witnessing that Allah is without partner. 6. Ibn al-Mutaz said about that, meaning Allah's existence. Oh wonder how he disobeys the divine. Or how the infidel denies, when in all things there is a sign. Indicating that he is one. We conclude this section of the chapter with the following verses of the Quran. Has not the news of the destruction of the communities who disbelieved before you reached you, O disbelievers? The people of Noah, the Ad, the people of Hud, Tamid, the people of Saleh, and the communities that came after them, which are so numerous that their full number is known only to Allah. Their messengers came to them with clear signs as well as miracles. But they did not respond to their messengers and did not believe them. They did not utter anything that indicated their faith. Instead they said to their messengers, We reject what you have been sent with. We have disturbing doubts about what you are calling us to. Their messenger said in response to them. Can there be any doubt about Allah's oneness and about worshipping him alone, when he is the creator of the heavens and the earth, who brought them into existence without any precedent? He calls you to have faith in him so that he can wipe out your previous sins and defer you until such time that you can complete your fixed period of life in this world. Their people said to them, You are only human like us. You have no merit over us. You want to turn us away from what our forefathers used to worship. Bring us clear proof indicating the truthfulness of your claim that you are messengers from Allah to us. Ibrahim 14, 9-10 The idolaters claim that some of the creations are the offspring of the Creator, may He be glorified, when they said, the angels are the daughters of Allah. Indeed, the human who makes these kind of statements is very ungrateful and deviant. O oh, idolaters! Do you say, Allah has chosen daughters for Himself from among the things He creates, whilst He has privileged you with male offspring? What an absurd distribution this is which you claim. When one of them is given news of the birth of a female whom he attributes to his lord, his face becomes gloomy out of severe grief and sadness, and he himself becomes full of anger. How then can he attribute to his lord the very thing that he himself is saddened by when informed of it? Do they attribute to their lord the one who is brought up in adornment and is unclear in speech when arguing due to its femininity? They also regard as feminine the angels that are in reality the servants of the merciful. Were they present at the time of Allah created them, so that they would know that they are actually females? The angels will record this statement of theirs and they will be questioned regarding it on the day of judgment. And they will be punished for it because of their lies. And they say, using divine decree as evidence, if Allah willed that we did not worship the angels, we would not have worshipped them. So because he willed for it to happen, it proves he was happy with it. They make this statement out of ignorance, they are only lying. Or, have I given these idolaters a book before the Quran that allows them to worship other than Allah, which they are holding fast to and using as evidence? No. That has not happened. Rather, they are using their blind following as evidence, saying, Indeed, we found our forefathers before us upon a belief and they used to worship idols. We are continuing in their footsteps in worshipping them. And just as these people have lied and used the blind following of their forefathers as evidence, O Messenger, I did not send any messenger to any community before you. Except that those living in luxury in that village said, Indeed, we found our forefathers upon a belief, and we are following in their footsteps, so your nation is not any different in that regard. Their messenger said to them, Will you follow your forefathers even if I brought to you something that was better than the belief they were on? They said, Indeed. We reject whatever you and the messengers before you have been sent with. So I took retribution from the nations that rejected the messengers before you and I destroyed them. So ponder over what the outcome of the rejectors was, because their outcome was painful. Al Zakraya 43 15-25 Does the one who created all creation not know of the secret, and that which is more inconspicuous than the secret? He is the kind to his servants, the aware of their affairs. Nothing is hidden from him in that regard. Al Malk 67, 14 Yet, were we to put what these noble verses refer to into logical, rational form to address the atheist who denies the existence of God the Creator, it would go as follows. You the atheist know of yourself that you are created, that you came into existence after not being. So, either you were created from nothing and something created you. And it is impossible that you were created out of nothing. Therefore, something that exists created you. And this maker, either he is you yourself or someone other than you. 
and it is impossible that your maker is you yourself. Therefore, it must necessarily be something other than yourself who created you. This other who created you is either like you, in need of some own to create him, or he is not in such need. And it is not possible that the one who created you is like you, because if he were like you, we would also have to say about him what we say about you. Therefore, it must necessarily be that the one who created you is self-sufficient, not in need of anyone to create him. Physics and the Existence of the Creator, al Fijia W.A. Wujud al by Dr. Jafar Shikidris. Without a doubt, this maker is Allah, glorious and exalted. In conclusion, man's sound, unsullied, wise nature knows by necessity that the universe has a creator, wise and supreme, sufficient unto himself, not in need of anyone to create him. For he is the creator of all.